This clip is brought to you by SaveWithConrad.com. Well, let's let's talk about the incident. We've talked about the movies and the documentary. They're all out there, but it's January 26, 1996. And to put this in perspective, guys, we're like six months before Kurt's about to win the Olympics. I mean, this is a crazy story. DuPont drives with his security to Dave's house on the farm. And by this point, DuPont had hired a, a former FBI agent as his personal security because he's paranoid. And Dave's outside of his home working on the car and DuPont rolls up, rolls down the window and asks Dave if he has a problem with him. And then he shot him and the FBI agent jumps out of the car and runs off. DuPont shoots Dave a second time. And then Dave's wife, Nancy comes running out of the house. DuPont aims the gun at her and tells her to go back inside as Dave is crawling away shot twice now. DuPont shoots him in the back a third time. And this time Dave is dead within minutes. This is a real life horror movie that is beyond any story I've ever heard in sports ever. And if you hadn't lived it, I don't know that a lot of us would believe it. What was, uh, what was the talk amongst the, the Schultz family? Did you speak to his wife or Mark or any of the other wrestlers there? What can you tell us about this? Well, I just knew that Dave got shot twice and uh, John killed him in cold blood. I mean, Dave was on the ground trying to crawl away. when Nancy came out to the porch and John pointed a gun at her and said, go back in the house. And then he just took the gun and shot Dave in the back one more time. And it's crazy because the FBI agent could have helped. Yeah. He, he took off. Like, you know, he... Uh, the second John shot the first time, the FBI agent was scared to death. He just took off and went and ran to the woods. Uh, but John just killed Dave in cold blood. It was uh, uh, it was really sad. It was uh, mind blowing. Uh, we we never thought that he would ever do something like this. But you know, like I said, you look at some of the patterns that he did, and you look back now and you say, "Oh, we should have seen this coming." We definitely should have seen it coming, but when you're, when you're in the moment, you don't know. And, uh, John seemed to be harmless. So it was, it was a really tough situation. And, you know, my heart went out to the Schultz family because, uh, you know, Dave was truly loved by all of them. You wrote in your book, even with all that money, he was never happy with his life. His parents expected a lot out of him and he didn't deal with that well. And he even wrote as much as I hate him for what he did, I felt bad for him in some ways. This has got to be, I don't know, man, just a worst case scenario for you. I mean, this is your mentor who helps put you in touch with the Fox catcher opportunity. And DuPont was always supportive of yours and helping cover travel expenses and other things. But my gosh, now a real life tragedy has happened and you're supposed to be focused on the biggest accomplishment of your life just a few months after this. Yeah, this was a little speed bump in, uh, in my journey to the Olympics. And it, it was tough. I mean, uh, knowing Dave wasn't going to be there anymore and knowing that the club, uh, you know, I didn't want any part of the club anymore. I didn't want the blood money. Uh, so I quit the club right away before anyone ever tried to contact me. I was the first one to clip, quit the club. And Nancy Schultz found out and she called me and said, Hey, I'm starting the Dave Schultz wrestling club. I'd like you to be the first member. And I said, all right, I'll do it, Nancy. And she said, well, what were you getting paid at Foxcatcher? I was like, wait a minute, you're going to pay me. She said, yeah. I said, well, I made this much. And she said, well, that's what we're giving you. I said, Nancy, you don't have to do that. I'll just wrestle for Dave Schultz wrestling club. That's fine. And she said, no, I want to make sure you get paid what you were getting paid at Foxcatcher. What you did was first class, and I really appreciate you doing that. Uh, so, you know, it was, it was a really nice conversation with Nancy uh, because, you know, I was going to be her first member of her club. And it, it was the first time that I talked to her since the death of Dave. When was the last time? Do you still keep in touch with Nancy? 
Yeah, we we talk every once in a while, probably once or twice a year. We text each other here and there. Uh, I talked to her son, Xander. Uh, they le- I live out in California. She went on with her life. She moved on. I believe she got married again. And, uh, the, you know, the, her kids are grown up now, which is crazy. But, you know, time goes by really quickly. What about uh, Dave's brother, Mark? Are you in touch with him or have you ever been? We contact each other through social media every once in a while. I, I've never been close with Mark, but Mark and I have earned each other's respect out of what we've accomplished in wrestling. And out of because of Dave, because of how I value Dave and how he valued Dave. And we have that connection because of Dave. I get it. It's a wrestling podcast, but he's saving us money on our mortgage. Do you really trust this process? The reviews don't lie. Five star review after five star review. We make it fast, we make it easy, and it's no cost or obligation. Give us a shot to earn your business. I'm telling you, you'll be glad you did, especially if you like keeping more of your own money. You don't need perfect credit or money out of your pocket. So what are you waiting for? Hurry to save with Conrad.com. In chapter seven of your book, you wrote that you had made some, uh, phone calls dozens of times. It's January 96. You wanted to call Dave Schultz to tell him you'd be coming to work out at team Fox catcher the very next day. You left him a message. And when you came home from training that night, you turn on the TV and on CNN and you see the news, the news anchors telling the story, John DuPont had shot Dave Schultz seemingly without reason. And you wrote that it was shocking, but at the same time, in a weird way, it wasn't. What can you tell us about this unbelievable twist? Well, John, you know, he always did some crazy stuff, you know, and we always thought it was for attention. We didn't think it was anything else was the fact that he loved Dave. He was infatuated by Dave and he, he was, he was vying for attention. He was trying to grab the attention away from Dave. It it was shocking because, you know, John never attempted to kill anybody before. I mean, he did some crazy stuff, but nothing too crazy. Not, not to the point where we thought he was threatening someone's life, but you know, John would do crazy stuff just for attention. I think that's all all it was for. We didn't know that he would uh, go to that length and kill Dave. Had you ever had discussions with Dave about the fact that John would snort cocaine and carry a pistol around? Did he think it was, Hey, he's weird. He's eccentric, but he's harmless. Is that always where it came back to? Or was there a, a threat of violence? Like, man, I don't know. This could get weird or dangerous. It was more, guess what he did today? Yeah. You know, like jokingly, you know, he, today, he, this is, he got a tank, bought a tank and rode it on his farm and started uh, running over all his barns and buildings on his farm, you know, it, or he would, uh, the, the, the president of Fila was visiting Foxcatcher. He's the president of the world governing body of amateur wrestling. This guy's very powerful. He's a big name. John DuPont put him in his car and drove him down a hill and went straight into a lake. And he, the, the guy would have died if John, John was an excellent swimmer. So John got him out of the car and brought him back to the shore. But, um, you know, the, 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 the president of Fila was really pissed when he came, went into our facility. And it was like, John's doing this crazy stuff again, you know, just, uh, we just thought he was doing it for attention. We didn't know that he was mentally ill or, you know, that he was crazy. We, we, we really didn't know that because we knew nothing about mental illness back in the midnight. Right. I mean, you were either crazy or you weren't. And, uh, you know, it was, it was cut, cut dry, but cut and dry, but you know, John definitely had some form of mental illness. You know, I'm fascinated by the story you just told. He's going to bring the head of amateur wrestling, the governing body of wrestling. And it's a big honor to have that guy come to your facility. I mean, it's got to be something where everybody's getting ready. Okay. Let's make sure the facility's clean and everybody have your best shit on and all that type of stuff. And instead we drive the dude in the lake. Do you (laughs) think he did that just because he wanted to position himself as, oh, I saved this guy's life. Maybe he wanted to have a hero moment. I think perhaps, because like I said, he did a lot of stuff for attention. 
Yeah. Dave, Dave was getting most of the attention. As a matter of fact, the world governing body of FILA, the president, when he walked in our facility, he walked up to Dave first before John. Mm. So, I mean, I, I know that that really hurt John's feelings. And, you know, I, I think John just had a certain jealousy because he wished he was Dave. He, he couldn't be. So he was doing everything he could to say, here I am. Look at me. You know, don't look at Dave. I'm here. I'm, I'm, I'm the, you know, the head of the club and I'm running it, not Dave. So uh, I think that that had, that had a lot to do with their relationship was very close and Dave knew how to calm John down and, and control him. Uh, but, you know, the day of his death, you know, it was just too late. You know, it's, it's funny that you say, you know, even just the introduction that he, that he wasn't first bothered him. I kept thinking as you're describing this story these days on social media, people call it clout, Kurt. I don't know that you're in the loop on that, but it feels as if DuPont felt like or hoped the clout that Dave had in the wrestling community. Of course, Dave had earned it through blood, sweat, and tears of competition. And maybe DuPont thought, I can't do that. Maybe I can write a check and, and buy the clout that Dave has. And that proved to not be as easy as it was. You're right. And John got a lot of credibility by starting the wrestling club. And, you know, uh, he got a lot of respect from a lot of people but it wasn't the respect that Dave earned. And I think John was trying to make up for that. He wanted to be Dave and he wanted to have the same respect Dave had. And unfortunately he didn't. There were a lot of wrestlers that feared John because they didn't want to get fired by him. You know, they were, he was our boss, but you know, as far as respect, you know, Dave had the utmost respect out of everybody. Is it true? I saw in my research that DuPont didn't do this, I'm going to drive my car in the lake stunt once he did it twice in four days. I heard I wasn't there the other time, but I was told that he did it twice. The second time was with the world governing body of FEMA president. And I, hey, hey, it's Conrad Thompson. Thanks for checking out the podcast here on YouTube. Be sure to hit the subscribe button and the notifications bell so you get a notice anytime we upload some new content. And go save yourself some money right now. If you're in a 30 year loan or you have credit card debt, it's not a matter of if I can save you money, it's a matter of how much. Find out right now for free at savewithconrad.com.